Um, one thing I do want to give credit for is thank you to Andrew Haley and to um, um, uh, Mrs. Tal Arlene Taliadoras. Um, yes. Let us, let us use images from um, their personal collection. So I want to thank them for allowing us to use those. Um, here's the agenda. We're going to go through the process, review our, our accomplishments from the 2015 strategic plan, um, go over the 2022 strategic plan, and then address questions and feedback. And just for context, people should understand that we did have a plan in 2015 that we executed, and we're going to talk about those accomplishments. But um, because of COVID, we did not revisit this in 2020. Um, and now we are coming to you in 2022 for a five-year plan. So I think we're trying to set a cadence of every five years to review the plan. And um, this is uh, our post-COVID revisit of our strategic plan. Next slide, please. Um, the plan has been developed through a series of public strategic planning committee meetings, reviewing recent accomplishments and updating the town's long-term priorities. The SPC is comprised of representatives from the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Historical Commission, the Economic Development Committee, representatives from key stakeholder groups, town administrator, and town planner. The SPC has developed 10 goals, each underpinned by a set of actions to achieve those goals, and those 10 goals address a broad range of topic areas from town facilities to public safety. Um, while the goals do not address every matter confronting the town, we believe that the plan addresses the most pressing challenges. Next slide. Next slide. So this is the process that we went through. Um, we began by reviewing the 2015 plan to see, okay, what did we accomplish and what did we not get to? Um, and then what goals needed to carry over into the next version? And then what new goals do we need to add? So that was a pretty rigorous process. Um, and what happened is we came up with the goals and then we took all of the goals to each of the boards and committees that are actually responsible for executing on those and said, does this align with your, um, your goals within this committee? And uh, we got some feedback, we did some tweaking, um, and that's um, how we came to this plan. Um, in the middle where you can see we're on public review, we're in the midst of planning this with, uh, or sharing this with Essex residents. So people can go to the website and review it. There's a survey. Again, there'll be office hours next week. And um, you can also email Brendan with your feedback. So we do want to vet this with the public, make sure that this um, aligns with you know, our shared goals. And then once we, um, once we get that feedback, um, incorporate it, and we submit it to the Board of Selectmen, um, they will approve it and adopt it. I think that maybe will happen maybe December, um, but we will we'll put that up on the website when we have better better sense of that. And then what happens is after that, the strategic planning committee meets not as frequently, um, maybe quarterly to kind of say, okay, where are we against goals and what do we need to do and how can we help kind of um, accelerate those things that we think need to be addressed or prompt folks. Um, and, you know, as always, I don't, I don't whenever we um, adopt goals, in our own lives, we often, uh, some other thing comes along from left field and kind of throws us off. So we, we hope to um, accomplish these goals, but we never know what the future will hold. Um, things like COVID happen. So, you know, these are our best laid plans today. And, you know, uh, understanding that other things may um, come to pass that, that prompt us to kind of make some shifts. but. We're trying to be mindful of uh, what our goals are today and, and be flexible. Okay, next plan, next up. Uh, great, so um, Brendan's gonna go through um, the strategic plan from 2015 and highlight the, the accomplishments. And I just want to give him credit because um, a lot of these things happened because Brendan spearheaded them. And um, so all credit, I think, or much credit goes to, to him. So Brendan, you want to take over this part of it? Of course. Do you hear me okay? I can. So in the plan that's expiring 
presently. It's still still in force, but hasn't hasn't been replaced yet by the new one. I'm just going to go down through the various goals. Goal one had to do with facilities and infrastructure. Um, in that time period, Town Hall was completely renovated. The new public safety building was certainly um, in its design phase and partially underway. Of course, it didn't open until um, the spring of 2021, but a lot of that happened. And now, of course, it is done. The um, new elementary school that is in Manchester, Memorial Elementary, which also um, is part of, of course, is part of the Manchester Essex Regional School District and something that's integral to the district's uh, capital planning. One day there will be uh, Essex Elementary coming into the mix. So um, supporting that and getting that done for, for um, the elementary school in, Man in Manchester um, is an important milestone. The town's water system, we're now moving into a uh, situation where all of the town's American Rescue Plan Act money, ARPA money, is being spent on modernization of the uh, uh, water supply wells. We have three of those for the public water supply. And then town meeting recently approved $200,000 in cash to design improvements to the water filtration plant, uh, which I think is circa 1982. And um, the town meeting voted to borrow up to $2.6 million to actually construct those improvements once the design is done. The town installed a sewer system between 2000 and 2006, and there were about 230 grinder pumps, which are in areas where you couldn't get gravity from your house to the sewer in the street, so you needed a grinder pump. And we're now going on uh, generation 2.0 of the grinder pumps, a lot of moving parts, and after almost 20 years, it is time to replace them. Those are being upgraded as we speak. It's being done in phases. The Kanoma Point seawall, excuse me, which uh, experienced uh, some degradation in past years, especially during the major storm in 2018, um, received a grant to replace that seawall, and this spring that project was complete. Um, one of the things that uh, made it into the strategic plan. Um, that was also in a couple of other guiding plans of the town, those being the town's municipal vulnerability preparedness plan and the town's hazard mitigation plan, is a low spot on Apple Street that sometimes floods if the flood at the Essex Causeway is big enough to um, cause flooding on Apple Street as well. I, and so I'll, I'll be getting into that a little bit more in this presentation later and also one of the uh, key things was that the causeway bridge uh, needed to be replaced. And if you've been downtown at all recently, you'll know that that's happening as we speak. Goal two, town government. We wanted, uh, the, the committee wanted to find people that wanted to participate in town government because it was kind of a shortage on volunteers and people filling out committees. And so there was a survey that was done at a town meeting and it act actually um, the town was able to draw quite a few candidates from that. So that was a success. And some of those people are still serving on boards and committees today. Also, um, the town website um, has been upgraded uh, just a couple of years ago to the Drupal platform that it's on now. And um, the police department and the town clerk have their own Facebook feeds and that's also to try to get people much more involved in uh, in town government. We've been doing a lot with individual pages like the Strategic Planning Committee has a page now and the Economic Development Committee, et cetera. With respect to Economic Development Goal 3, um, a specific committee was formed out of a recommendation that was in the original Strategic Plan. Jody Harris, who was introduced just a bit earlier, is the chair of that committee. Um, that committee went and then wrote 
a, an economic development plan for the town, which is up on the website. There was a parking study done because that has to do with um, feeding the economic engine in the town. It's on the website. When we came through COVID in order to help rebound from that, the town received a local rapid relief program grant, uh, which looked at a, a variety of tools that would be helpful in bouncing back. Um, one of the things that was in that plan had to do with uh, lighting, decorative lighting on the causeway, which could help uh, create a sense of place. And that has been funded by a grant uh, that our town planner worked on. And uh, we're working toward that. And these lights would have planters on them for decorative plants and then banners that would change with the season to make, make it kind of a destination. The pilot project grant was something that was managed by the Chamber of Commerce. And it was um, partnered on by the Cape Ann communities. And it really helped businesses become organized and reach out and um, gave training, et cetera, to help try to come back from that uh, awful time. The mixed use zoning district, which was something supported by the Economic Development Committee, um, came into being, uh, town meeting has, has passed that, and that allows by right now um, the ability to have perhaps a, a store on, on the ground floor of the downtown area and perhaps apartments or other housing on, on the second floor, that type of thing. Um, there's a new platform that came out of the pilot project grant called Blue Dot, where a lot of local businesses, whether they were members of the, chamber, the Greater Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce or the Essex Merchant Group or not, they were able to sign up and to particip participate in um, business type communications. And the town has used that several times now to try to get specific messages out to the business community. So there's been a, a lot done there. Protected lands, uh, the town renewed its open space plan and the town participated with other communities um, and with uh, Greenbelt in the um, acquisition and development of Sagamore Hill, which is a new open space area uh, for hiking and, and enjoyment. Goal five, health and access to natural resources. Um, the an access part of that is that for many years, we've been working toward getting the Essex River dredged. We have found out that the Army Corps of Engineers has been funded by Congress for that work, four and a half million dollars. And we should see that work start. Um, they're going to be doing a lot of the planning and finalization really soon. And hopefully by uh, next winter, we will see actual construction, not this coming winter. The town has, uh, town meeting has appropriated funding to deal with the invasive green crab, which is a predator on clams, which is the livelihood of, of many in Essex, uh, as, as well as state grants for the harvesting of these crabs. And then they're sold as bait or brought to compost facilities. But in any case, they're taken out of the environment. Uh, Selectman Fippen, I don't know if he's with us tonight, but he has really taken a lead on invasive plant control around the marsh. There's a plant called pepperweed and of course phragmites, and uh, that, that work has been ongoing throughout the time of this initial <laughs> strategic plan. Uh, several improvements have been made at Kenomo Point. There's the new park down there with the, uh, with the gangway and float. There is the new seawall, which came with a resetting of all the um, memorial benches and a nice little green strip along the seawall. Um, and there's been a couple of parking areas added. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, uh, oh, also, um, there has been continued. If you have an open mic, please uh, mute your mic. That's, we're getting a little reverb. There has been ongoing clam seeding. The uh, clam warden, shellfish constable, Billy Novak has, uh, whenever possible, uh, worked with uh, various biological labs in the area to release uh, clam seed, juvenile clams, into an area that is held together by nets. And then 
could clams grow unharmed under that without predators and eventually the nets come off and the clams uh, are adding to the stock that's out there for harvest. We have looked at Chebacca Lake and the Alewife Brook, uh, including a study that's recently wrapped up and that's on the website that gives us good next steps on making sure that there's always good flow through the brook, um, adequate path for the alewife to swim back and forth, uh, and next steps being, um, we think, logging of water levels in the brook and in the lake and with respect to groundwater over time. That's We've got $30,000 more from a state set aside to do that. That'll be coming soon. And then the Green Community Grant Program, which, which had been managed by former town administrator, uh, not town administrator, he's a town administrator now, I'm sorry, town planner, uh, Matt Coogan, and has now been taken over by town planner uh, Dana Menon, and she's doing a great job with that. Goal six, uh, recreational opportunities. The library has really gone and created many new programs that a lot of people, young and old, are taking advantage of, and we're happy to see that. The various holiday celebrations are continuing. Uh, there's a nucleus of um, very dedicated volunteers with associated with each holiday. For instance, the holiday festival, uh, Halloween, sometimes there's an Easter egg hunt. Um, people are, have stayed involved with that, uh, primarily for children, of course. Uh, Camp Dory continues to be um, successful at the Centennial Grove. It's coming up on its last season next year. And at the same time, the Economic Development Committee is spearheading Centennial Grove in general and making sure that uh, residents can use those facilities as well as the uh, continuation of the camp. Memorial Field behind Town Hall, there was a great volunteer effort there. And as you know, all you have to do is look, it's an amazing transformation. The Folsom Pavilion, which had to be torn down because it was unsafe, um, there is a volunteer effort in place right now that hopefully by the spring we'll be seeing a new Folsom Pavilion being constructed. And then there is a volunteer effort to also uh, put tennis courts, uh, replace the tennis courts at Memorial Park. Goal seven is the school budget, and we made sure that um, we kept communication open in a group called the Collaboration Group. That has to do with personnel from Manchester, Essex, and the Regional School District, along with elected and appointed officials, such as selectmen, school committee members, and finance committee members. So we always keep communication going there. There's an ongoing discussion about the growth of the school budget and what trajectory that should take. And there'll be more discussion about that uh, in the coming budget season. And of course, uh, capital planning. And I mentioned the next big capital need is likely going to be Essex Elementary School and Manchester will help Essex fund that, just as Essex helped Manchester fund the Memorial Project. With respect to maintenance of the call fire department in goal eight, a few things were done to encourage that to remain a call department. A fire explorers group, this helps young people come together and meet and learn about uh, perhaps one day becoming a probationary firefighter and then moving through the system to continually staff our fire and EMS. Um, in the new station, uh, there is a fitness room. So I, I've noted the new station there, but also there's a fitness room in the new station that is open to all folks that are participants on our fire service. And so that's a place where they can go and stay fit for what they do for the fire service, but also uh, personally. And so that's a benefit that we hope will entice folks to, to, uh, to stick with the uh, fire service. It's, it's a gym right here in town that they can go to 24 hours a day. And also, we moved to day coverage by the fire department, meaning on weekdays, they uh, at least weekdays, they have an eight hour shift where people rotate through. It's not the same person every day necessarily. And uh, they have someone covering the station, uh, which takes pressure off of the response time, especially during the day. Goal nine, affordable housing. 
We first started with a housing coalition uh, that was courtesy of assistance from the Citizens Housing and Planning Association, CHAPA, through a grant. And when CHAPA came on, on board, they helped move toward the mixed use zoning district. They were supportive of that, as was the Economic Development Committee, Selectmen and Planning Board. That got done. The uh, recommendation then came to form a formal housing trust, which will take over the work of the coalition. Uh, that came after a, um, a housing forum, very interactive housing forum, took place in Essex, very well received and well attended. Um, and now the housing trust is in the process of being put together. Four members of seven have been appointed and the selectmen are waiting for recommendations from parent boards for the other three. Goal 10, coastal resilience. As I mentioned in the past, we are a municipal vulnerability preparedness community. That designation happened in 2018 with the advent of our MVP plan. The town in 2019 created the hazard, uh, updated its hazard mitigation plan, which is a federal plan, which keeps us open for other grants. An example there is the generator at town hall at a cost of like $45,000. That was entirely funded by uh, the federal federal funding, which wouldn't have been allowed without having a current hazard mitigation plan. We were active participants in the creation of the Great Marsh Adaptation Plan because Essex has quite a bit of the Great Marsh real estate within its borders. We did disaster planning through grants. We did sediment and transport, sediment transport and placement through grants, showing how sediment travels through our area. It's kind of a southern drift down from uh, from Amesbury down, and some of that makes it, as you know, in, into our uh, Essex River mouth. And that's one of the reasons we need dredging, which we'll be addressing. Also, we looked at potential reuse of sediment that we dredge and place it on the marsh. It's still an idea because that keeps the marsh platform above or keeps pace with sea level rise. But right now, the state is not um, inclined to permit that. We will keep studying it though. We are on our fourth grant right now for the Apple Street Roadbed Elevation Project. We got two grants that we're looking at um, just replacing a culvert that goes in one of two low areas on Apple Street, goes under the road, uh, and this is on the Southern Avenue end, is that low swampy area. Um, the second, so the first grant looking at that was basic data collection. The second grant looking at the culvert was uh, brought the, uh, the situation into more of a design and, and, and got it ready for where we are now. The third grant was uh, the Mass Coastal Zone Management Grant, which looked at a second dip in the road together, both dips in the road, one with the culvert, one without the culvert, or about 800 feet long. And the goal there, which is being fed by our municipal vulnerability preparedness plan and our hazard mitigation plan is to elevate that 800 feet so that when the causeway floods and it gets higher and higher and more frequent with sea level rise and climate change, that Apple Street won't also flood as it did in the, um, went in the winter of 2018. The causeway bridge has been replaced, which was, uh, pointed out in those other plans as well in the strategic plan and the Kenoma Point seawall has been replaced. So if you look at those goals one through 10, you can see that not only a plan was created in 2015, many things that were in the plan and these things come directly out of that plan, uh, which is the plan that is currently on the website. If you go to the homepage, you click on strategic plan, that plan will come up and you can review for yourself what was recommended and you can compare that against what I've just um, gone over. Um, Brenda, in, I, have a, yeah, yep, I, don't know, I don't know if we really want to go into too much detail on this. This is just kind of how uh, we transitioned from the old plan to the new plan and kind of what happened with those separate goals. Um, yeah, and this presentation will be available on the website when we're done. Uh, probably tomorrow I'll put it up. So okay. I agree with you, Annie. Um, it's something that people can look at um, you know, just to see how the transition went 
And so there were a couple slides on that. And that brings us to the plan itself. Great. So would you like me to call that up? Perfect, thank you. Okay, let me just do that. You know, while you're doing that, I think the other thing that's that we can be happy you, about is- that Are you goal. seeing that? Excuse me, are you seeing that? Yeah. Okay. No, I, still, I still see the PowerPoint. Okay, I think I have to share this one out separately. Just give me a minute. Okay. You know, it's important that we set goals and that the goals help us execute. So I think there's a lot to be proud of. It is a little bit dry. Um, some of this stuff is not as sexy as um, some other things could be, but it is. Um, it shows the power of goal setting and um, empowering committees to do the work. So. Hold on, I'm gonna hear you started because yeah. it won't let me show that one. Yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> so this plan is also on the website. This is the new draft plan, and this is the plan that we'd like folks to review and provide commentary on. Okay, so now you can see that, right? Yep. And I think we all might right, so I'll get started. Uh, so just guide me where you want me to go. And Let's go to the first goal. <clears throat> Don't get dizzy. Oh. Do you want to do any overview or you just want to go right into it? Let's go right into it. Oops, that went fast. Great. And I'm going to just do a high level review. Um, so goal one is to update and finance critical town infrastructure. As you can recall from what Brendan told you earlier, um, those goals were effective and we actually got a lot of them done. So the town needs to ensure that our town facilities and infrastructure meet the needs of residents and businesses for their long-term prosperity. Facilities and infrastructure must also continue to adequately serve town personnel so that the services may be provided in a safe and comprehensive fashion. Our goals here are one, to develop, plan, and implement new zoning bylaws to enable intentional growth in Essex. B, update ex Essex's existing capital improvement plan to focus on providing the financial support needed to implement new and maintain existing capital improvement projects. And I'll just briefly go over those. One is the water, can we go to that first? Um, yeah. Scooch up just slightly. So water treatment plan improvements water supply well improvements. And if you go to town meeting, you're aware of these things. Um, water distribution system improvements, sewer system pump stations that need upgrading and improvement, and all the sewer grinder pumps that are not in gravity fed seg segments. And we see those um, uh, kind of popping their heads up when uh, they don't work. Um, so that is, again, underground, invisible, but costly. And so we're trying to build, um, and I think our finance committee has done a very good job of kind of planning for these kinds of um, infrastructure needs and the board of selectmen as well. Um, but uh, it's important to name it and to uh, to put some, uh, some money and develop a plan on how to fund it. Um, replace the Folsom Pavilion at Centennial Grove replace the Essex River Bridge, that's underway. Um, and I think they're doing some significant stuff this week. Uh, it seems like there looks like a bridge. Um, yep, so the main beams are in and they're starting to pour the concrete for the main bridge deck and the, si the sidewalks on either side. They're hoping to get that done by Halloween so that all winter they can work on things that can be done in the cold. Perfect. Um, Financial adi finance additional affordable housing in Essex. You know that we established the Affordable Housing Trust. And so um, the next step is to kind of develop a plan. So again, remember that this, this plan is a five-year plan. None of these things are going to happen immediately, but they're all kind of in the, um, they're in different stages of, of uh, implementation. Uh, con continue to improve facilities for all residents at Canoma Point. Study the effectiveness of the fire department's response service to Camilla Point, Robbins Island, and Lufkin Point. Um, that study kicks off in the spring of 2023. 
um, and also studied the effectiveness of the uh, public safety plans to provide emergency services for um, an event in the event of a natural disaster. So the, again, those are two studies that we're um, embarking on in spring of 2023. So some of this is about um, funding facilities and some of it's about, okay, what do we need to do going forward? Um, continue to seek opportunities to regionalize municipal services with Cape Ann cities and towns. And I will tell you that as a member of, former member of the school committee, that um, you know, I know that regionalization conversations are happening all the time. And it's not just with Manchester, it's with a lot of um, different communities on the North Shore. Right, and there was a study done that's mentioned there, and I, I yeah. do recommend, the, if you haven't seen that regionalization study, it was a real brainstorming yeah. study. Um, come back to this, on it's on the website, and take a look at that report. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. Develop a detailed school reconstruction plan for Essex Elementary. Um, I know that that is uh, something that we're talking about in terms of timing. Uh, develop a plan for the 2022 fall town meeting to begin to, to dispose of surplus town property. I know there have been some concerns about um, how that will happen. And please know that um, uh, properties are being identified and they will go through a public process to kind of vet and um, uh, uh, distill it down to um, those that are the, the most um, appropriate for disposal. So it is a public process. It's not going to be happening, you know, um, outside of the public process. So I know there have been some concerns about that. Identify areas for new economic development growth led by the Economic Development Committee. And kudos to them for getting up and running and um, really having, I think, sound economic and kind of a business strategy approach. Um, evaluate the need to expand sewer capacity, investigate the infrastructure capacity of several uh, key parcels that, to determine the development options based on findings, investigate scope, options, feasibility, and costs. Um, that is um, ongoing. And um, down here we have these blue boxes, Brendan. No. Just oh, okay, I'll go back. Those blue boxes are kind of like a distillation of the goals and who's responsible for them and kind of a gauging of is this a near term thing? Is this a thing that's going to be happening every year? So in terms of um, what's important, uh, want, you'll see the phasing is one, two, six, seven. Those are um, prioritized. And then if it happens every year, it's one through five. So um, I hope that makes sense to you. Goal two, emergency services, maintain the town's call fire department and improve the town's emergency response to vulnerable populations. Um, as you all know, uh, our town is heavily dependent on a call fire department. It is not only an effective department, but it is also um, you know, a huge cost savings to us. So it's a big sacrifice for those families of, of firefighters but it's also a huge boon to our community because they're very good. So um, having the call fire department saves us about a million dollars a year. And we wanna be sure to maintain that as long as we can. So these goals under this are about that. And also to <clears throat> also kind of be mindful of those vulnerable populations that may need, uh, so that the, the town knows where those folks are what their needs are. And I think the, the thing about vulnerable populations is it's always in flux, right? You always, um, folks are constantly kind of in uh, entering that, that and then exiting unfortunately. But um, so we wanna be mindful of who those folks are and how we can help them. So can we scooch down to the goals? Um, uh, in terms of maintaining the call fire department, continue to seek new call firefighters. Uh, support the Manchester Essex Junior Firefighters Program, consider alter, alternative strategies, and then um, and then study whether the department would benefit from full-time full -time leadership for full-time firefighters. Um, ensure that all firefighters receive required training. I think we're really good at that. Continue to work collaboratively with town leadership to develop a long-range capital and equipment update and replacement plan including regular appropriations into the town vehicle stabilization fund. And I'll um, mention something on that, Annie. Um, yeah. 
at um, fall town meeting will be the, the selectmen will be speaking again to put a large amount of money into the um, set aside fund for vehicles that a large amount was put in last town meeting. And this is because in a few years time, the department has to replace the ladder truck and the hope is to actually just buy it in cash. Okay, great. And again, kudos to the Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen for establishing these stabilization funds. It's, um, I think it's you know, future planning and it's smart. Um, continue to customize delivery of services to vulnerable populations, both locally and possibly via the Amer Cape Ann Emergency Planning Team. Um, create an ad hoc committee to help individuals with lifestyle compromises self-identify life-sustaining needs in times of emergency, thereby enhancing local and regional emergency response procedures. So <clears throat> this is um, an ad hoc committee. I think that um, the last time we talked about it, um, some folks at the Council on Aging were interested in helping to lead that effort. So um, they, uh, I, I hope they're still committed to that. It was very generous of them to kind of step forward, but um, I think it's an important uh, process. How many more do we have on this one? That's it. Great. And then here are the, again, the phasing and those who are responsible for it. Okay. Goal three, maintain and further develop a strong business community. So um, the EDC was founded a, a few years ago. Jody, I think you took leadership of that committee, um, I think two years ago, um, and have really kind of um, built that committee up and developed some goals, which I think um, you see the results here. So um, of those goals, Create multi-use commercial districts in Essex that will help increase and diversify Essex's tax base. Conduct and document informational centers, sessions with large local employers to learn the location requirements and hire an economic development professional for short-term initiatives to market Essex-owned areas for business development. Purchase and install historical streetlights and other um, features for our causeway. Publish a Doing Business in Essex comprehensive guide and revise the town's website content and navigation to aid new and bus existing businesses in navigating the permitting processes. Conduct a study to determine the potential ROI on um, improving Centennial Grove's water and sewer infrastructure so that the town can maximize its event rental potential. Uh, seek funding uh, to create a placemaking plan to foster an inviting environment in the downtown area and to seek funding and partnerships to implement the recommendations of the placemaking plan. And anyone who wants to know what a placemaking plan is, it is creating um, spaces where people can pause or gather or um, kind of rest. So kind of park kinds of places. We do have some of those pocket parks, but it's that sort of um, um, uh, a place where things can happen or um, where people can rest or look Right, around. and I'll mention that the old site of the fire station is potentially one of those areas. And town planner Dana Menon has applied for funding that would help us do some of the underpinnings of, of layout and planning in an area like that. And we're still waiting to hear about that. Great. <clears throat> um, seek grant funding to hold an off season event series, potentially in collaboration with Manchester or other area partners. So all good work. Um, the Economic Development Committee meets regularly. And if you check the town website, you can find out when those meetings are. Uh, goal four, protect and manage conservation land, open space, and historic places in Essex. Improve the health of and access to water resources and protected lands. So. Essex has about 3,200 acres of protected land on 200 parcels across the town with both historic architect, architecture and scenic views that together create a unique sense of place. So, um, you know, one of the things I think we can be proud of is that we have a lot of protected uh, um, space and um, open space. So um, we want to protect and preserve that. So our goals uh, to that end are to preserve and protect our op scenic open spaces forest ecosystems, agricultural heritage, and threatened habitats. So um, underneath there, you can see the detail. Um, next goal is 
We establish a voluntary non-binding local register of historic places to help distinguish properties of greatest historical significance to the town of Essex and ensure that measures are in place to ensure the integrity and longevity of these properties and spatial arrangements. Established an Essex tree initiative, Friends of Tre Essex Trees, to promote and protect existing and future trees on town-owned land and in otherwise protected areas. Develop and implement policies that encourage the health of the salt marsh and remediate human-caused damage where it has occurred. Um, under the oversight of the Essex Conservation Commission, develop an Essex wetlands bylaw to provide additional, uh, additional enforcement capability to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. All of these are a lot of work. I mean, I, I, these are very dense goals and there's a lot of work um, there. So, um, you know, while there are committees that are responsible for this, it's going to take a lot of people to actually have these things happen. So, um, uh, there you go. Goal five, expand the range of recreational and enrichment of opportunities and assets. So nature has provided Essex with many of its most precious, precious assets, but beyond our rivers, lakes, and woods, there are recreational and cultural resources requiring attention. The town has invested in recreational infrastructure in recent years, including the downtown's pocket parks, rebuilding and enhancing the baseball field, and a current effort to repave the tennis courts. Cultural amenities also provide recreational outlets, such as the Shipbuilding Museum and the historical walking tour of the town's cultural district. Um, as the town does not have a youth commission, but relies on a partnership with the Ipswich YMCA for summer recreational children's programming, we would be wise to leverage this relationship to expand programming to other groups in town seeking learning and educational opportunities. So this goal is not just about uh, young people. It is about them, but it's about all residents, seniors and people who are not yet seniors like me. Um, getting there, but it's, it's about trying to kind of um, build community and uh, support spaces that allow that to happen. So um, create an ad hoc committee to identify current opportunities and unmet, me, unmet needs, unmet needs for recreation and enrichment. So we know that um, there are a lot of ideas out there and we also know that there's some space that we can leverage and um, uh, what's good about our relationship with the YMCA is they have a marketing department that's done a lot of information gathering and market research. So we can leverage what we already know with what the studies that they've already done and kind of develop some plans. But again, this is an ad hoc committee. Um, we've had a, <clears throat> a youth commission in the past. It's kind of had um, an up and down um, success rate, but if we're hoping to get a group of folks that's not just rep representing students, but also um, the community at large. Uh, next. Uh, expand the partnership, partnership opportunities with the Ipswich YMCA to provide expanded programming. And um, what we've learned from the Y is that they are working with several communities because towns like Essex can't really afford um, rec departments, um, and so uh, the Ipswich Y is working with communities to kind of help provide that um, those services. So um, we'd like to see if this ad hoc committee can kind of leverage that relationship. Um, and C, create a, an Essex bike plan and develop goals and plans to make biking safer for all. Consider a partnership with the Manchester Bike and Pedestrian Commission or committee. I know that that committee has reached out to Essex before and not had any luck in, in getting people involved. Um, they're still interested. And if folks feel that this is a priority, there are folks in Manchester who have done this before. We don't need to recreate the wheel or bicycle wheel. Um, and we can make that happen. Uh, goal six, promote fiscally responsible government. Concerns about the rising impact of inflation and a tight labor market have required a continuous cautious stance in our budget planning, despite an increase in the town's revenue. Town budgets reflect some unexpected planning challenges beyond our control and have offset an otherwise lean approach to managing the town finances. To achieve this goal, the Essex um, SBC recommends the following actions. And uh, just so everyone knows, the Finance Committee is um, represented on this committee, has uh, weighed in on this, and there is an edit to this slide, but it hasn't gone through the 
uh, strategic planning committee. So um, it's going to be coming in the next uh, version of this before it goes to the, the board of selectmen. So that will be um, when, the, when those revisions happen, we will put them on the website so you can see them. So first, achieve and maintain economic sustainability through prudent decision making, fiscal restraint, and carefully divided development, carefully guided development while pre preserving the town's rural atmosphere and excellent schools. Finance critical town infrastructure for the next five years, but plan for financing for the next 10. Continue to increase shared services with neighboring communities to reduce the town's operating costs and improve services. And again, this is referring, I think, Brendan, to that same report you, you talked yep. about a minute ago. Right. Um, optimize mutual transparency and accountability between the school district and town leadership and budget in the budget process. And that's where there's some edits to this. Um, I know that Brett Ben is on the line and he has given us some edits and I know that um, there's going to be a conversation with the collaboration committee to kind of work on these a little bit. Um, is there, oh, there is. Continue to leverage federal and state funding for water and sewer improvements and other projects. Identify shovel ready projects to take advantage of available funding. Explore alternative sources of revenue for the town where appropriate beyond increasing the tax rate and direct financial burden on residents. And I think that that speaks to the work that's being done by the Economic Development Committee. And then study the impacts of increasing uh, the commercial tax rate. And I think the Finance Committee is working with Economic Development on that, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Jody, if you. <clears throat> Goal seven, meet the housing needs of all Essex residents through community housing initiatives and regulation of short-term rental units. Many current and future residents cannot afford to purchase or rent a home in Essex because of the high cost of housing. Affordable housing supports the town, town's economic development goals and provides income accessible homes for workers who may choose to work for local businesses, which often suffer from the lack of available labor. At the fall, at the, sorry, at the 2022 annual town meeting, voters approved the establishment of an affordable housing trust. Formation of the trust will allow the town to act swiftly with community housing opportunities to rise should that, that would meet the need for increasing the town's affordable housing stock. Um, in terms of uh, our affordable housing stock, I think we're at 3% of the, the goal um, and you know we can do better. Uh, so develop a housing plan that includes five and 10 year goals, helping Essex meet its affordable housing goals and plan for its implementation. Manage and guide the development of affordable housing for the benefit of current and future residents and to fulfill state recommendations, maximizing local initiatives and minimizing any adverse economic or environmental impacts to the town. And then I think there is a C. Further study the prevalence, regulation, and appropriate taxation of short-term rental units within the town of Essex. Um, and I think that might have to do with um, Airbnb sort of uh, rental units. Yeah, correct. Okay. Goal eight, promote renewable resources and build coastal resilience. Um, while the challenges of all types face the town with respect to the ever accelerating pace of climate change. The chief concern is flooding from sea level rise and more frequent, more severe coastal storms with attendant storm surges. Um, I don't think any of us can deny that there is um, a threat to coastal communities, which we are one of them. And um, so these are the goals that we have to address uh, coastal resilience. Review the past use of renewable resources and foster steps in the next five years to reach a 10 year goal. Um, uh, and the town planner is really driving this and has done, um, done so using the Green Communities Grant. And we have all benefited from that. I think um, Essex Elementary benefited from some lighting and other. Um, uh, uh, the building automation system over there yeah. at, the, at the school. Yeah, so, um, and the town also, I think you used a lot of it in town hall. So uh, this is a, yep. a, a great resource for us. Phase out fossil fuel burning municipal vehicles to the extent practicable. Again, uh, you know, this is for uh, vehicles where a green alternative is appropriate. <clears throat> um, some, of, some of those will not be um, appropriate in some departments. Determine the feasibility of installing electrical vehicle charging stations at municipal parking spaces. If feasible, seek funding for installation. 
Determine the feasibility of installing solar panels on municipal buildings. If feasible, seek funding for installation. Ensure the successful completion of seawall replacement project. Work to ensure the elevation of the Apple Street roadbed. Work to establish and protect eelgrass in all areas where possible or appropriate. Use dredge spoils for salt marsh enhancement and protection once allowed by state regulators. Establish muscle reefs to retain marsh edges. And analyze building study findings about southerly sediment flows along Crane Beach for practical application. Assess the viability of salt marsh dish ditch infilling using dredge spoils from the Essex River. Continue to plan for increases in sea level rise and establish the na natural marsh drainage on town-owned lands. Um, all of these things, or many of these things, are the result of studies, Brendan, I think that you have been um, very involved in. And, um, you know, I think that uh, Essex is actually one of the communities that's helping to lead in that coastal resilience area. So thanks for that. Do you want to speak to any of that? Uh, just that, you know, we've done all this primarily through grants and we go out and we look at what's being offered and compare it to our needs and we've been successful. We've been, you know, fairly aggressive in going and getting some of these things. The, the Apple Street, um, the fourth thing that we're on right now, the fourth grant for Apple Street is just shy of a quarter of a million dollars to bring the whole thing through final design and permitting. So. A lot of this can be done with grants. We hope to do a lot of the construction with grants. So for instance, the dredging is getting done 100% with federal funds. The um, We're also hoping that if if we get through the, uh, the design and permitting project for Apple Street, that we could get 90% federal funding and 10% state funding to get that done without spending town money as well. That's our goal. We use grants to do a lot of the studies and we hope to get big dollar uh, federal grants to do the actual implementation. Great. Thank you. Uh, goal nine, maintain the excellence of our schools. Um, uh, we have a great school system um, and we want to continue to um, provide that for our kids because our kids should have the same opportunities as any other kids in our state. Uh, support the goals laid out in the 2021 Manchester Essex Regional School District Strategic Plan. Plan for the timing and funding of the replacement and renovation of Essex Elementary School. And please know that that is a very collaborative um, discussion. Um, you know, I think that um, everyone is being very cautious about when we can do that um, and when Essex can bear the cost of that. And then this goal, <clears throat> I know, is um, folks have commented on it, and um, I know that the uh, the finance committee is working uh, with Ben. Uh, so that's Ben, Ruth, and and Brendan uh, to revise this slightly. So um, right now it says the town of Essex will work collaboratively with with MERSD during the budget season to strive for an overall apportionment based spending growth rate at or below 3.5 percent, and if that 3.5 uh, percent overall apportionment growth or less is not possible and a correction or override is necessary. The district and the two towns will work together to ensure the budget increase aligns with district goals and town spending priorities and limitations. So again, an edit, I think will be uh, forthcoming on this. Um, and then 10, um, this is all about zoning. So to review and update Essex's current single district zoning bylaw by preparing and implementing a comprehensive residential and commercial zoning plan. We know that the planning board has been working on this for a couple of years, or I think so, a couple of years. Um, so uh, to achieve this goal, utilize the baseline analysis and public input collected during the completion of the 2021-2022 comprehensive zoning study and develop and vet detailed proposals for actual zoning bylaw changes. The work of this objective will hopefully be funded by an additional state grant in the fall of 2022. This grant will continue to, uh, to include additional public outreach and targeting efforts of adequate and to adequately prepare voters for town meeting proposals 
MAPC was contracted to assist the town with the grant application. And we hope to hear about the success of that grant any day now, literally, so. Great. Um, present to the town of Essex at its fall town meeting in 2023, the result of a well-studied and vetted proposed zoning plan recommendations. If the act A above recommendations are approved by the fall town meeting, the town will have fulfilled the goal of the two-year charge of use moratorium, change of use moratorium that was instituted in order to allow for this important and transformative process. So um, there's a lot of um, in, a lot of work packed into these two goals. Um, and uh, I know that people are very vested in what happens here. And I guess I would recommend that you follow the Board of Selectmen and also the Planning Board in its work. Um, and it's always very difficult to pass Planning Board um, uh, uh, articles at town meeting because they're so complicated. So, um, you know, it's important to kind of uh, just follow these conversations so that you're not taken um, unaware at town meeting. And um, these are all the, the, the um, studies that the town has done that have informed many of the goals in this plan. Um, again, this plan will be up on the website and Brendan, let's go back to that. All of these are live links <clears throat> up to those, those um, studies that you just passed by. All of these are live links that you can go into um, and study. So, um, you know, town has done a lot of, um, of studies and a lot of work. Um, and here's kind of the source and the primary source documents if you wanted to look at them. Um, this is followed by the old 2015 plan. And um, I will tell you that we're not going through that. So. No, and, and I, I pretty much already did verbally. Yeah. This is just the, the written documentation. So I'll go yeah. back to the PowerPoint now. Yep. Okay. That's a lot of talking. I'm going back to the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, you see it? Yeah. yeah, perfect. Next slide. Great. So there is a survey that's been put together. There's a link to it on the website. And when we have this presentation up, you can use this link as well. Um, we've had already had, I think, 17 responses to the survey. And, um, you know, uh, it is what you would expect. Some folks are unhappy about everything. And then there's some folks who have some really good constructive criticism. So um, please use that if that's um, a good way for you to communicate your thoughts and, and um, uh, if that is effective for you. Um, there are going to be office hours next week um, on the 10th at 7 p.m. at the town hall and on the 13th at 7 p.m. at the town hall. And it's going to only be an hour, um, but we'll be there to kind of take your comments and hear your thoughts. Uh, the next strategic planning committee meeting is on October 27th at 7 p.m., where we will take what we've learned from this meeting, from the survey, from feedback we get, and kind of try to make sense of it and make edits where we think it's appropriate, um, and then um, finalize the, the document. I'm not sure that we'll actually done it, get it done on the 27th, but we'll try our best. Um, and I just wanted to review again the public comment guidelines for this evening. Uh, two minutes per person. Nobody will speak more than twice. Our timekeeper tonight is John Badiz. Um, and one thing I want to be mindful of is not going down a rabbit hole. So, um, you know, you may make a comment, but we're probably going to take it under advisement. We probably will not respond unless it's a quick response. Um, and again, uh, uh, there's also, you can use, you can send your comments to Brendan if you'd like to. Um, there are different ways of doing it. We just want to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak to this. And also, Brendan, can we go to the next <clears throat> slide? Because I know there's been some, some concerns about Apple Street and the plans there. Um, 
this is the schedule, which is also on the website, the town website, of kind of what's happening with the Essen, or the, the Apple Street project. Um, and I want everyone to see that this is all happening on November 2nd. There's um, a public presentation at the Senior Center, um, a tour of the causeway and where the project is focused. And then at, in the evening, there will be um, a public forum. So um, I know that uh, the Apple Street um, work has been um, something that people have a lot of um, concern about. And those, um, those dates, that date is kind of the Apple Street roadbed day. And, um, but, you know, let's start with public comment. If anyone has any comments or things that they'd like to, um, why don't we go back to that slide that's got the slide 12. So does anyone have anything they'd like to, to share? I don't see anything in the chat. Oh, come on. Is there anybody on the phone that would like to comment? I don't know if we even have anyone on the phone other than John. There is one. <coughs> Except John, you're right. Okay. Okay. Everyone must just be wowed. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. School, I mean, uh, strategic planning members, if you want to comment, please, please do. Thank you, Annie. Let me just open to my pages where my comments are. Yep. So my first comment is going to be goal four. Um, sorry, bear with me. <clears throat> goal four, number C. I have a concern. It says manage town owned lands with a balance of consideration given to both economic and environmental values. So when we use the word manage, my concern there is that it feels to me that the intent is that we would potentially end up moving toward hiring a full-time conservation agent. And as mm -hmm. we know, we have a very part-time conservation agent at this point. And should the town not want to move toward a full-time position, um, that we would be looking, if it's in a strategic plan, would we be looking to potentially have some of those lands managed by someplace like MECT or Greenbelt or some other organization? Do you, and I know that this is a, a the goal was written by Tom Berrio and probably Julie Schofield, so, and I know they're not on the line and maybe they can't speak to this, but is yeah. there anybody that does have any information or feedback here? <clears throat> I don't think you're the first person who's expressed concern about that term manage. Okay. Um, uh, I think, John, you and I have talked about that as well. Um, if you wanted to also. Um... Well, I, ju I just think that it's a bad choice of words from what they want, want to do. It's, uh, it could be interpreted in a number of different ways. Uh, just remember, this is a plan. It's not uh, a charter for somebody to do something mm -hmm. uh, or to manage something. This is a, this is a planning document. And uh, I think I think there should be a better choice of words than manage. Okay. Um, I think I'm trying to remember some of the feedback in the survey that I saw so far, and I I, I think there might have been another person who had commented on that as well. So um, I think that Dana, let's just make a note to go back to uh, Tom and Concom folks to just revisit the language in that goal. <clears throat> to see if there's something that, um, you know, if there's better language or um, maybe uh, more clar uh, more clarity in, in how that's phrased. Does that um, work for you guys? That's fine for me. Okay. Yep. Annie, my next comment, do you want me to stop now and come back at the end or can I keep going? I, I think we've got time and um, you're doing great. Okay, under goal eight, promote renewable resources and build coastal resilience. So my concern here is, is very specific to one department. And 
you did say that not all departments will be appropriate, so I want to point this out. B says phase out fossil fuel burning municipal vehicles to the extent practical. So I'm glad we're using to the extent practical. Practical. Um, at the end of this evening, I'm going to have a tally of the fire department vehicles. So it was brought to my attention that um, I, I believe town planner Dana Menon reached out to the fire department and she's looking for some feedback on s some related issues with the trucks. And so my husband and I were talking about it and he said, you know, it's just not practical to have green vehicles for the fire department and the reasons why. So one of the things I want to bring to your attention, their tanker is 30 years old and it has 9,000 miles on it. These vehicles do not, most of these vehicles do less than a thousand miles a year. They don't burn a ton of fuel. And the, quite frankly, the cost of these vehicles, we were, we were looking into some of the numbers here. So to replace their ladder truck that they're looking to replace is $750,000 for a, um, a gas vehicle or diesel vehicle. And if they were to go with a green ladder truck, they would be somewhere closer in the vicinity of 2.8 to 3 million. So we need to be cognizant of the fact that while it's great to think about green vehicles, it's not always practical from a small town perspective. Um, so I just want to bring that to your attention that I hope that we stick with the, to the extent practical portion of this goal here. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I remember when uh, Matt came to the school committee with the green grant um, uh, proposal and we were talking about, well, you know, the trucks really can't be green. And I, and I think it was really clear to folks on school committee that, you know, there are certain vehicles that are um, more likely to be, um, for it to be practical for them to be green and then others that are not because it's cost prohibitive. So, you know, maybe we want to add something about cost prohibitive in there. Okay. Um, That's, and I'll have more information, which I know Dana is listening. So um, Dana, I'm going to get some more information to you. I have my husband doing a tally of all the vehicles, the mileage, the years, and how much fuel they're burning for you. So I should have that by the end of the night. So Thank you'll have you. some information on that. That's great. Um, and I just, maybe I can just briefly clarify that the information I'm collecting is not committing in any way to electrifying those. It's for a comprehensive free study of the potential for electrification down the road and that it will create a baseline that we can update as new EV vehicles become available. And there's no expectation that we would, that this would trigger EV purchases. It's going to take a very frank look at whether it makes any sense to do it. And the consultants just wanted to make sure that we got all the vehicles in there so that they could provide us this platform with every, all the information in there. Dana, if there's more that you're looking for than I mentioned, feel free to shoot me a quick email and I will make sure that I have Dave get you any other data you need. Because I know that given that we have a call department and they have such limited hours, sometimes this can be stressful for them to get these things done. But I have a bigger belt, so I get these things done. Um, Thank you. And then, Annie, my last comment is going to be on goal nine, which you... Sean, and I know Ben's on the call, and I obviously read that that looks like it's going to change slightly, but I do want to say that under goal nine, number C, where it says at or below 3.5, that has been brought to my attention from several different people with concerns about it not being very strategic to be holding a number in a strategic plan. So, which you've touched on, Ben's touched on, I know we're going to review that in collaboration and talk about it, but I just wanted to have say that as well. So, those are all of my comments, and I just want to thank Annie. For how much work you put into this and all Dana and BZ, you guys have done an outstanding job getting this all together for tonight. Thank you. And I'm going to just come back at you and say that um, the 3.5%, you know, when I was on school committee, um, that would take a long time to get there. Uh, and um, the reality is that, uh, you know, school budgets grow at about 3, 3.5%. For a year at least. So um, there are also people who will tell you they don't want cuts in school budgets and every year we are cutting um, to get to um, a place that, that works for both towns. So, um, you know, there are folks in town who also want to spend um, money to get there, but I know collaboration is working on this and we'll get to um, some sort of an agreement, but um, I'm always going to fight for school funding as much as we can get. 
And I and I don't think that we're not going to land at 3.5 or even 4.93. I realize that. I guess the point is, is it strategic to hold a hard and fast number in a strategic plan? Even though we all want excellence in our schools and we all realize that we're going to probably be funded well above that. Because Ben will even tell you that we in finance committee meetings, they'll even say that there are schools that grow at a 5% increase. So it's not that we don't recognize that. It's just that should we be holding a hard and fast number is the question. Yeah, and I and I, I guess I would argue that um, at least it's is from from when I was on the committee with us from that strategic point, it was like at least we got there. You know what I mean? Like at least we had an agreement that um, and it was public. So. Um, you know, I hear, I, I get it. I know where you're coming from. I think you know where I'm coming from and, um, and they'll, you guys will hammer it out. And Lisa yeah. just turned the camera on and is, has her, she's ready to go. You can tell, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to talk to goal 10 about the, um, the bylaw and the zoning for a minute. And I'm yep. going to give you some written comments on that as well. Um, <clears throat> And, and I want to also say that um, until recently, West Burnham had been the planning board rep to uh, the strategic planning committee. So I haven't participated in, and you know, he's he's done a lot of work with you guys over the years. So um, I'm I'm new and just wanted to acknowledge that. But um, in in looking at uh, what the planning board is going to be working on with regard to both the bylaw and zoning, I want to make very clear that there's sort of two parallel tracks that are happening there because one is our zoning bylaw itself, which is the written document with the regulations in it. And the other is the zoning map of Essex, which right now we have one general use district with some overlay districts and some small districts out at Canoma Point. But overall, the town is one general use district. So that's been a point of um, <laughs> both pride and contention over the years. So that's one thing we're going to hopefully be looking at if we do get the MAPC funding with that organization. Um, but aside from that, our bylaw itself, uh, regardless of whether we do um, any changes to zoning districts, the bylaw needs upgrading um, and strengthening really so that we have a more robust and enforceable bylaw um, <laughs> as far as the written document goes. So. I just want to be very clear that those two things can happen separate from each other. We can revise the bylaw without doing zoning districts, and we could do zoning districts separately from um, the bylaw revisions. So I just I think that distinction needs to be made because people talk about zoning and they think about just zoning districts or the the land use, but they're they're two different um, parallel approaches that we're going to be taking as we do the sort of revision work. So I will put so, my comments in writing and I will submit them. Okay, and so um, do those comments in, include a a, a language proposal change for that for that goal? Do you want to change some of the language or tweak some of the language to reflect what you just said? I would say tweak. Great. Because okay. I, it, 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 and the reason that I, I want to tweak that is because it's going to be, um, a zoning is, as, as you acknowledge, is incredibly complicated and hard for people to wrap their brains around. So I want to be very clear in, in our messaging and, and what the planning board is doing as we move forward so that people understand there's changes we can make to the bylaw itself. And then there's the whole con conversation around zoning districts in the town. And, and those are two different things that we'll be talking about at the same time, but they are, they can be done separate. So. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. All right, Johnny. Or they could be done together. Or they could be done together. No, that that's they can be done together. That's true. But what my, my point is that my point is that it's drawing zoning districts in this town is going to be a long and painful process, and it's something that we need to explore. We need to try to do, but by the same token, we don't need to couple bylaw revisions to that zoning district effort because bylaw revisions can be fairly straightforward and cut and dried and and done in a fairly expeditious manner to make sure that we have a stronger bylaw. And then with a stronger bylaw in place, we can take our time and talk about zoning districts and, and really consider that question more carefully because 
uh, we have an established town and to draw lines around it is going to be a complicated process. So that, that that's my point of, of sort of decoupling these. Yes, they can be done together, but I think we'd be optimistic to think that um, the zoning districting work can happen in the same time frame that a bylaw revision can happen. John? Anybody else? <laughs> Okay. Okay, so our next meeting is October 27th, um, where we'll be going to we'll consider some of the comments that we get for all the comments that we get. Um, thanks to everybody who um, showed up to listen. Um, a lot of this was the choir, um, but uh, you know it's been recorded and folks can watch it if they'd like. Um, again, you know, there are multiple ways of giving us feedback. And thanks to Brendan and Dana and the committee for all of their work. And um, onward, let's go. This okay. session is no longer being recorded. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.